it. You might. You want me to do this one? You want me to do it? I don't know. You do it. You okay. Do it. Okay. I'll let you do the last half of the season. Okay. Okay. Intro cool. this. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, children of the corn, to another episode of the Mind the Sword podcast. Blah, blah, blah. Yep. All right, this is why I don't do it, because I mess up. English is a language. English is my first language. I do apologize. I'm still learning. Um, but the Mind the Sword podcast presents Scare Actor Appreciation Month. I feel like it's a tongue twister every time I say that. You're getting better and better every time, buddy. No, I'm not. I'm getting worse every time. <laughs> but we do have two very special guests today. We have Allie and Panda. Why don't y'all introduce yourselves? Hello, I'm Allie. Hey, I'm Panda. Awesome. Uh, what do you guys? What do you guys? Uh, what do you guys play at the event for Not Scary Farm? You so I'm in uh, Camp Snoopy. I'm a uh, face of soldier. I know you had Dylan on before. Yes. Uh, I play as the general, though. Oh, the nice. General. We've heard a lot about the general. So I am the uh, face of soldier that you'll see in at least three of the uh, six show moments. Nice. Oh, wow, nice. 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 I'm Allie. I play one of the saloon girls slash kind of like the. Madam, I'm like Madam Minerva mm-hmm. out there. Uh, I'm a saloon girl, but also taking over the saloon from Goldie, who used to be a character out there. So now I'm like slowly going to be in charge of like nice. the saloon. I like Slash that. brothel. I like that. I like that. <laughs> Slash lots of other things. Lots of other things. Everything then. Uh, <laughs> so we have Hollows and Ghost Towns, two of our favorite scare zones this season. Yeah. Man, this is going to be a fun one. It'll be a lot <laughs> of fun. going to dive deep into this one right here. I like this. Um, so, this is an event that literally is get, it gets put blood, sweat, and tears in every single year. Um, and we love coming to this event. We love the scare zones. We love everything that just is this event. Um, and for you two to be part of this must be like a really awesome feeling, right? I mean, just like yeah. this is the haunt that started it all, really, you know? Yeah, both of us. It- we dedicated quite a few years. Uh, she dedicated eight years for myself, seven, and then now I've done two years in production as well, helping build all the horrors that you see come to life. It's beautiful. Mm-hmm. It's, a, it's a piece of art. It really is. I love it. I mean, I'm a, I'm a horror fanatic, so just going to an event like this and bringing nightmares to life, it's great. I love it. Mm-hmm. Everything I walk through, everything I see. And I loved how detailed this event is compared to a lot of the de- uh, other events. Like, you go to Horror Nights and stuff, I mean, a different vibe than you, when you yeah. go here, you know, and I that's why I think this year Nas was like our favorite area to be at this season. Uh, and it also didn't help that you know we live 15 minutes, so it's like boom, yeah, yeah. we're going. So, quick question you're the first person that we've had that's uh, you know, worked behind the scenes on Hair Panda. Um, so did you work specifically on one maze, or were you like rotated between all the mazes during like the build? So, the production crew is actually a very small team of people that go in there and put these mazes up every single year. Uh, so it isn't like one set of people get set to this one maze. Everyone eventually puts hands onto that maze that goes up. Definitely. Yeah. So it's really cool being part of this team. Um, a lot of heart and passion go into it. I mean, these are some of the most talented people I've ever worked with. And we work with almost nothing sometimes. Nothing to go on. They'll give us an idea. Hey, I think this would be cool make it come to life and that's (laughs) all we have to go on sometimes and so it allows us a lot of creative freedom to really put effort into what we want to see in these mazes because a lot of the production crew are also haunt monsters or were former haunt monsters so we love this event through and through and so now we want to put in what we would want to see we want to always be stepping it up because if we were guests or if we were working the events we would want to see it get stepped up every single year. Yeah, yeah, definitely. definitely. I love hearing that from you because that shows how much heart goes into this event. Like, mm-hmm. and I see it. It doesn't go unnoticed. It's seen in the in the event, whether it be in a scare zone, in a maze, even all the shows that they put on from you know mm-hmm. like everything from start to finish, behind the scenes and in front. It's it's not. It doesn't go unnoticed, and it comes out like I keep saying, one of the best fucking events in the world. <laughs> yeah, I'm not even like joking on that one. Um, <laughs> How oh, early really do cool. they start build? <laughs> early. Build pretty much <laughs> never, never ends. Yeah. I don't uh. think he ever stopped from when he striked last year's event to this year's. Just could nonstop. It was like off. take down the ones that need to be taken down and the ones that are going away, and then it was instantly building the brand new ones and wow. stuff like that. I think in one of the events that they said they started as early, they mentioned that they started the 
like what waxworks in february waxworks started in february uh they did mention that in the announcement event at the beginning of the season yeah yeah um uh, which actually helped us out a lot too because now we weren't on as such strict of a time constraint as we would usually be, mm -hmm. which allowed us to put more detail and more passion, just more art into this maze, which is why Waxworks is such a beautiful looking maze as it is. I couldn't agree more. It's yeah. such a great maze. I mean, I yeah. love the whole aspect of you walking through this maze, you know, the whole storyline of, you know, him turning people into actual wax figures. I mean, of course, a lot of inspiration, I would say, drew from like that the classic House of, uh, House of Wax, you know what I mean? Yeah. And yeah. it's just, it's such bringing that like nightmare to life. And then as you progress through the maze, you're starting to see the dark side unveil more and more and more, you know? And I really like, I, I like how you brought it up that, you know, you had all this time for creative freedom to, you know, take the time to build this maze and perfect it. And it, it, like I said, didn't go unnoticed. Yeah, one person I have to give a huge shout out to though is uh, Dave who works in props over there in production. Mm -hmm. The Hera monster, which is one of the final scene monsters, that big tall one that stands right up against the wall. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, he was basically just given an idea, this is kind of what I want it to look like. Not given much to go on it. Mm -hmm. He then went in there, skinned, foamed, and latexed everything all himself, wow. sculpted everything. Mm -hmm. He built that whole thing from the ground up ground oh up. wow and it was just all him doing it by himself which was an amazing feat it's one thing you can't miss in that maze either right? yeah no it's right there it's, it's right in your there. face yeah. and i really got to give credit to him i mean he did some amazing work working back and forth with uh the designer daniel miller yeah. and then tweaking things and constantly trying to evolve this creature into this monstrosity that became, which to us is awesome. It is. It's freaking <laughs> itching. I went through it. I was like, oh my God, I had never seen anything like this before. This is awesome. Um, yeah, man. I mean, I'm, I'm, I, I, when I hear stuff like a lot, like the fans are coming back to want to be part and build this event better than what they, you know, had, how can we improve it? And as time goes on, technology gets better. You know, we get more improvements and, <laughs> just tooling and, and building stuff and and just everything special effects you know as time goes on it's just getting better and better and I think that's cool that people want to come back and just want to build this event and make it the best it can be which I think is awesome it's really cool I mean that's what you're he's in the special effects department yeah yeah so like things that he told me he built were all the bars where you see like the invisible man like wow. he hand welded everything's like piece by piece wow to make that gate i think you also made the gate where like that shaking guy yes or is it just the that's like round corner yeah so all the metal gates that you'll see inside of waxworks were all uh hand built by me and uh my partner in effects uh Adon. Mm -hmm. another great welder nice uh but yeah, the round tube gates, there's about 185 pieces to one gate, if wow. not more. I don't remember the exact math, but <laughs> we counted out and it was, <laughs> yeah. it was kind of a nightmare of a project, but it came out looking really cool. Awesome. Yeah, yeah but every FX like thing is like, I think there's only, it's a very small team of them that do it, but they're the ones that are like putting it into each maze. So every little air blast, yeah. everything that dropped down, it's just their small team either having to build a new one for a new maze, whatever it may be, or putting it back in Definitely. to like old maze and stuff like that. Yeah, man, I mean, we say it every time at the end of each show, man, not only the characters to get the appreciation, but the people who do everything behind mm -hmm. the scenes, man, because we were in theater, man, and we, we know what it's like to, you know, build a show from nothing to something, Definitely. you know? It's like, it's a whole team effort at the end of the day. You know, whether you're doing sound design, lighting, props, you know, building the, the whole maze, you know, putting all the details, painting you know costuming makeup pair all that yeah. you know and the other day when everyone comes together and teams up and everything it's the final product is what you see yeah. from freaking september to november that's what you see and it's god it's beautiful isn't it <laughs> <laughs> so did you guys all, where, where did you guys begin when you guys got to not scary from um so i started in 2012 i was in the last year of dia de los muertos okay um I was like in that half wall jungle room if you ever went that year. Yeah, yeah. That's where I was for my rookie year. Um, after that, I spent four years in Gunslingers. Nice. And okay. each in the two last iterations. 
I played from my first year was a bandit cowgirl from on the evil side. And then two years later, the next two years, I was a saloon girl. Nice, huh? <laughs> Foreshadowing, right there. Right? Pretty there much. Everybody's <laughs> like, oh, you're f look at you, full circle. Aww. And then my last year, I was a saloon girl still, but uh, we lost one of the female characters in the front, which was like the wife to mm -hmm. the gunslinger. So the last year, she was like a werewolf. Yeah, yeah. So I ended up being her for most of the season. That's where I ended the season. I was the wife that was usually chasing people off the bridge, mm -hmm. telling y'all, no, you can't come in, basically, run back that way, <laughs> <Yeah>. please. <laughs> um, after that, I ended up in Red Barn for one year, and then before this season, I was in the village of the Pumpkin Eater, so I was the wife, one of the two wives that was in the Pumpkin Eater. You've been kind of everywhere then, that's cool. Yeah. You've had quite the career then. Yeah. Awesome. Pat, what about yourself? Yeah, so I started off back in uh, 2013, just real hopeful to get whatever position that I could. Uh, came in, they said, here, we got a May spot for you. I was like, cool, don't care what it is, I'll take it. Nice. As I'm about halfway out the door, they go, wait, come on back. So I walk right back over to them, and they go, we actually just ran out of uh, talent spots, but you can be a blackout. <laughs> which so neither. I didn't really want to be a blackout at the time, but they kept saying like, a lot of blackouts do become talent later on in the season, which is true. So anyone that's listening out there, uh, if you don't get the talent spot that you want and you kind of get forced into a blackout spot, don't worry. You can always move up to talent. Mm -hmm. I did it my very first year. Uh, I was a blackout in end games nice. halfway through the season. I then got pulled over to be talent in Gunslingers, which is where I, I first met her. Nice. Uh, <laughs> nice. The next year after that, I finally actually got to audition and ended up getting a squad leader spot in Special Ops Infected. Nice. nice. During which of this time, no one had any idea what we just signed up for. Was that what was in <laughs> Camp That Snoopy. was when it was in Camp Snoopy. Yeah. It's the very year first Camp year, Snoopy. 2014. <laughs> I wanted to go through that so bad too, and I heard, but tell me a little bit about that. I mean, as a squad leader, man, that must have been killer. So, as a squad leader, it was absolute chaos all the time. We had these prototype airsoft cross laser tag guns, yeah, yeah. which you can ask anyone that's been around them, did not work <laughs> at all. They broke more often than they worked. Oh, man. And so we would start having guns going down so often that we would have to start doing what we called gun runs, yeah, yeah. where a squad leader would have to pick up a big stack of them from one of the two sides because before it used to be uh, there was an alpha track oh, and a bravo, bravo track. track yeah. So we would sometimes have to take guns from one side all the way back to the other Oof. and then run all the way back to the opposite side where we were just at, pick up a group, take them through. And if you were unfortunate like I was in one night where I clocked in just over 27 miles in a single night. Wow. Mm -hmm. So you uh, ran your marathon? Uh, I ran a little yeah. over a marathon there. <laughs> <laughs> But, uh, yeah, I just kept doing a one-gun run, run all the way back, pick up a group, take them there, do another gun run, taking more guns back to the other side because they ran out, Definitely. and just constantly going back and forth oh, man. to where I almost never stopped running. And I would wake up, my whole legs would cramp up. They'd lock up every single morning. It was just an excruciating pain. But for some reason, I got up the next day and went, Hey, back. let's go do it again. Yeah. <laughs> I imagine he lost a lot of weight doing that. Yeah, so I think that year I dropped 60 pounds in that one season. Yeah. So anyone who wants to be a scare actor, you know, prepare. <laughs> ask him which, you ask some him, good weight right there. Ask him, which one can I run the most in? I know. If you want to <laughs> run a lot and lose some weight really quick for a month, there you go. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, and so I was an infected for three years, did the two years out while I was in Camp Snoopy, and then opened it up once it became a maze. Nice. Yeah. Uh, after that final year, I went, you know what, it's time to kind of move on and go back to the roots of what I wanted to do, and that was just be this creepy monster character, what I originally signed up for, for Not Scary Farm. Mm -hmm. That's when I finally got my spot, thanks to uh, John Cook, who... Gave me the uh, position there John as our hero on the Knights of War. <laughs> <laughs> we always our, our running joke is we don't know how that man sleeps. We don't know how that man lives his definitely. life because he has a band. He's got a freaking a bunch of haunts he takes care of. Yeah. He's a full time dad. Yeah. You know. 
Real nice guy too. If you I ever mean, get a chance to sit down and talk with him in person, super nice guy. Good old John Cook. But yeah, uh, after my years in Infected, I finally got to go over into Camp Snoopy. Nice. First walking into that with really no idea what to expect. And although being a squad leader really did help me get ready for the physical attributes of it, mm -hmm. Nothing ever really prepares you for a little bit of the sensory overload your very first night out there of There's nothing around me except guests. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you're in a very unprotected environment uh, Typically wise there's no walls. There's no blackouts. There's no escape routes really except unless you know where everything kind of leads to. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Luckily, working production, I know all the back ways, which in Cap Snoopy, there's not many, yeah. but uh, it does help to know the area in which you work and all your escape routes. Awesome. But it was a lot of fun getting over into camp, which I now call home. I don't plan on leaving anytime soon, as long as Knott's will keep putting me back in there. Nice. I like that. Allie. How did you, how did you, wait, before we get to that, I'm very curious about this. How did you develop the general character? So I was a face of soldier for two years. Uh, nice. First getting to see AJ, who was the very first general that I got to see. Judas. Uh, Judas. Judas. Yeah, nice. Judas is the, yeah, yeah, when he was in camp, he was the general. Wow. I don't know that. So, yeah. yep. The more you know. He failed to bring that up. <laughs> yeah. on him on that one. Okay. He might have called it war. He didn't kind of nickname the character war. Okay. So he just call it war sometimes. I really watch this podcast. We had him on twice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so... The idea with uh, behind that character is he's kind of supposed to be like the horseman of war. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the general is. That's awesome. Yeah. So he s stepped down from the general spot, went over into Ghost Just Town, mm -hmm. which now he became Judas. Mm -hmm. uh, during that time when he was gone, Boots and Boogie uh, both came in and were the general mm -hmm. last season. Real interesting with them. They're definitely more of a carnival type personality. Mm -hmm. So it's really interesting seeing them coming into a little bit more of a serious role. Yeah. Especially being that the uh, general character is a show moment character. Yeah, yeah. So you got your lines, you have the shows that you have to memorize. So it's really interesting watching them. And then taking a lot of what I learned from both uh, Boots and Boogie being very good in monologue and uh, Judas being extremely good at being very aggressive. Mm -hmm. So trying to take both of those and then bring them together is kind of what I was basing my general character off of. Mm -hmm. uh, definitely need to work on the monologue a little bit too, but it didn't really matter because you can't hear me through my mask. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I get you. Yeah. Um, all right, Allie. Yes. Your running partner this year was Jen. Yes. And we saw a lot of you two this year. Yes. Um, we saw a lot of funny moments with you two. She told me that you are not a big fan of bodily fluids. Um, hers, specifically. Uh, hers. hers specifically. Hers That's specifically. That's great. She's not a fan of me gagging either, though. I know. It was a back and forth thing. So it was like, she would obviously do something. That she would do that. her thing. Yeah. That she, like, I don't, it was just like, it makes me gag. Yeah. So, and I used to, so my character doesn't like alcohol yeah. is how she like passed away but she from alcohol poisoning mm -hmm. so when people have like, beers and then try to offer it to me or if i see it i just you know i start gagging like and it's like it's pretty bad like it, it almost makes myself gag like for real yeah. yeah but she doesn't like the sound of that because she can't control it it's an actual like phobia for her <laughs> yeah so when i start doing it she has to walk away but then she comes up to me doing this and it gets to the point where she's like following me like this look close i'm like gagging I'm like Ugh. and then she's like oh and I'm like please stop please stop yeah <laughs> we're not a fan of each other's things that we like discussed each other basically yeah, which is yeah. really which is funny nice. so I think it's a, it's a, it's funny though because like you brought up the fact that you know you don't like when she does that and she doesn't like when you do that so it's like it triggers both of them which I think is, yeah. is hilarious but you two rolling together this season. It's been it's been fun just watching you two. Yeah. And and just going up to guests and, and interacting with other characters in Kmart usually. That's where we yeah. would sit most of the time and I think I saw you guys a couple of times. I had like a girl. You guys were sitting there and I had a girl I think it was the chicken. She like said her name and, and she went running towards you guys. And I was like over there and I was like just yelling her name and she kept trying to hide like on your guys' bench and stuff like that. And I was just like that is the timer for the, the thing. But go ahead and finish. You've got like at least a minute left. Um, 
she kept trying to hide like behind, I think it was behind you because you sat on the closer side to like the walkway is. Yes. No, I sat closer to the walkway usually and he sat closer to it the, depend. the, depend. the yeah, yeah. yeah, it depends. But like this girl just, she was trying to hide behind you guys and like sit on the bench and I'm all like, this is not happening. This is and, not I just, happening. and I just kept yelling her name and she did not enjoy it. She kept, she tried running into the little bushes over there and everything. I'm like, no. <laughs> no. I just kept screaming her name. I was like, this is not happening. You're going to leave. Just go away. Leave them alone. Just go away. <laughs> Where were we? Um, oh, yeah. We're talking about Allie and Jen. Yeah. They're running together. Uh, yeah. I mean, there was a lot of moments we saw in Kmart with you guys. I mean, whether you would interact with... Um, you interact sometimes with the, with the bull. Yeah, yes. Thrash. Sweet thrash. Dash. Yeah. I remember seeing that a couple of times. Uh, <laughs> your guys' interactions with the she-wolf was always funny, too. Yeah. So, do you know, like... So... Not many people know what's around my waist. So I have like the saloon keys and the other set of keys that are uh, some characters like Bose, um, the vampire, uh, the vampire and some other people. Mm -hmm. And then I have a pocket. It's not a watch, it's just like a locket mm -hmm. filled with blood. Oh, wow. My character's a, a serial killer. Nice. Oh. Before she passed away, she was taking people's blood and then letting them overdose on alcohol. Nice. And just kind of like, big oh, they just overdosed on alcohol, not me. I did not know that one bit. Now I Yeah, I don't talk to I wasn't talking for the first three weeks because yeah. I was trying to figure out, like, what type of stuff do I want to say? Like, yeah. and also guests. Sometimes they're not fun to talk with. You interact with us, man, I can guarantee I'm a 12 year old kid. Like, oh my God, they're <laughs> talking to me. Yes, it's <laughs> yeah. all we friends. Here we go. And then on my, <laughs> my backside, basically, I had a pelt of rabbit fur. It was yeah. real rabbit fur. Okay. That oh. the she wolf gave me before she turned. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So that's how me and Jackie basically, like, inter like have our characters connected is mm -hmm. before the curse and everything. Before she was turned into the she wolf, she was kind of like a fur trader, and she had given me. I had bought this from her, but also like maybe some other stuff. So yeah, I wear that as like in a way protection for her to be my like my guard dog Definitely. in the afterlife. Yeah, that's, so I, I that's like, why I'm always gentle with her. I'm like, you're my sweet little pupper and stuff like that. So. Oh, so it is a thing. Okay. Yeah. That's why she's nice with me. And like, but I'm also like sadistic. That's why when she stuff happens with her and Jen, I'm just like, that's your fault. That's your fault. <laughs> that's your fault, Tootsie. I'm good old, good old Tootsie. That's, that's funny. Um, no, yeah. Cause I remember we would come in. You have, a, you have a lot of interactions with, um, Another chick. She would always wear the mask with the cloak and everything. Yeah, a lot. Of, she was always in Kmart. Always in Kmart. Are we talking about the bird or? I think it was a bird. Yeah, it was the bird probably. Our yeah. bird. Ty. Yeah, yeah. She was, Ty. Like, yeah. Towards the end of the year, she brought in eggs and she like chicken. Yes, that's yeah, Ty. Yeah. Ty. Ty. Um, She's their other saloon girl. Yeah. Yeah, I, I love the interactions you guys would always have with her too. Like yeah. especially on slow nights and stuff when you guys would be in Kmart together. Like. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was like a, it was like an improv show. Me and him were just sitting there, just laughing. Like, yeah, because I don't half the time I'm like, yeah, there's maybe somebody sitting over there. Yeah, half yeah. the time we're just like time to shenanigan and figure out fun stuff to do. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think Jen brought it up a little bit pre scare. We just mess around, have but fun, yeah. have fun. But it was like, ooh, like they can do this out there sometimes when it's slow yeah. and stuff like that. So there was a lot of different things that we found out in pre scare that we could bring out into the actual zone on a slow night or if it's like a cool show moment that we could do yeah. stuff like that definitely uh another thing we we want to talk to you about and we've heard it we've heard various points of view of this story is the the death of the she wolf that you were involved <laughs> in as well what was your point of view on that like what were you thinking as it was going down what what, what was your mindset on all that Character or out of character? Both. Take out both. of character. I was like, sweet, this is awesome. We can help kill a character. <laughs> it would be my second helping of a character that would be asking for a death mm -hmm. at the end of the season. Uh, in character, my character's all like, as long as I can have her blood. You're <laughs> slitting her throat, right? Uh -huh. That's all I care about. I just, my main job was to make sure in character and out of character in, within my head is that when we brought her over to the theater mm -hmm. that not too many people try to crowd around and get too close yeah yeah and stuff like that so i and we also had the other wolves that were there in front of us yeah that were like having their own shenanigans they were pulling each other around that's hilarious you can i think we can hear in your guys's thing what are you doing to my mama yeah 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 and i spun around and i was like whispering i was like we're doing a show bit 
just watch please don't try to don't try to interfere she asked for this like i had a whisper but like oh, yeah. don't interfere she asked for this <laughs> don't send us through a loop please so they just kind of watched while staying in character it was really nice though too yeah. but yeah i was just trying to watch i just my character just wanted to watch this she just wanted the blood Definitely. she has no she she feels sorry for this for the she wolf a little bit but she's all the time like you did do this you did you did do it <laughs> you killed a you child did. you, you killed, killed a child, child. Twice. Yeah. I actually didn't even see that one. <laughs> the, oh, so yeah, that one, we, we, I didn't get No, I, no I don't think anybody caught that one. I so am mad I didn't either. I didn't have my camera what that was, night. Was it in Kmart? It was in front of Birdcage, actually, because it was at the end of the night. Yeah. And all you heard was, like, a loud scream, and the orphan comes running around the wagon, the red wagon. Mm -hmm. They come from behind there, like, they were there by the schoolhouse, and they came, and they ran around right in front of... Right in front of the, the the porch, actually. Yeah, wherever. Yeah, wherever yeah, where everyone sits, and they just, she just killed her right there, and she uh, dragged her off. Set. And I was like, that was a sad one because they, she was one of our favorites, and you just killed her. Now I hope they kill you tomorrow. <laughs> I can't wait to watch you die now. <laughs> yep. I mean, that means we have had a couple. I think we had like basically three people killing somebody yeah, yeah. in the last two nights because we had the orphan, she wolf, and we had the spider. Oh, yeah, the spider, I was there for that. We were yeah, right that was, for that so one. Yeah, so I planned that. That was funny. Tara had, the, the Tara's their spider. She told us on Halloween, or no, it was the next day. So the first, yeah. she had got a new job. It's a great job uh -huh. up north, so she would not be able to come back. Oh, that uh -huh. sucks. So I went and found the person that is most scared of her that's also in the zone and said, can you kill her off on the very last night? Can you get over your phobia and go kill her for us in Kmart right before she's off, and, or right before you're off? And he said, I'll do my best. Uh -huh. So that character that, I, his, we call him Rufio. I don't know his real name, but I'm just gonna call him Rufio. I don't think that's his real name. Hostel? No, it's not Hostel. No, okay. Um, but he has like, he runs around with Echo, if you know who Echo is. They run in a pair. Okay. But uh, he's the one who ended up killing her and sending her to the ground while me and Jen kind of cried over her body. And I then did. we had those kids that were trying to like crowd with Judas near us and we're yeah, just yeah. like, leave us alone, please. <laughs> I liked uh, Judas's response too, like when, when you found out she had kids. Oh, Jen said that too. <laughs> Jen's like, she has kids. And I was like, at first I was like, what? Wait, what? That wasn't canon. <laughs> what? What's <laughs> going on now? I know. I don't <laughs> think he was ready for that. He was like, what? You can read the script. That wasn't in there. That, that wasn't, wasn't in there. In there. Yeah, he goes backstage like, yep, you, yep, not improvised. <laughs> yeah, she had a little spider babies in her little bun. That's yeah, why yeah. Jen had brought it up. We That's... called them the spider babies. And then Dean went on a whole rant like, there's a bunch of spiders and ghosts down we gotta find. She's got kids. And I was just like, this is great. Uh, no, that's, that, that, I mean, now hearing that, that, that was her, this is her final year. That was kind of. Her mom, the other person over there was her mom recording it. Okay, yeah. It was, was the only person that I let get super close yeah i mean yeah. we were just right there on the bench and yeah we were just thankful it happened right there yeah i mean so that was cool because yeah. also part of that uh Bo, the thrash he was supposed to come and pick her up oh wow but i think he had gone on break and you know it's the last night sometimes we forget stuff yeah so that's why me and jen kind of like uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> like dragged her over because she was like playing dead yeah yeah like full body like done done yeah. i was like done Okay, come on, come on, come on, come on. And then she couldn't get up, and then we'd help her up. Just, that's, that's, yeah. that's hilarious. hilarious. I, I like, I like little things like that, little interactions like that. It's really cool. I mean, it really brings the event more story and just brings it more alive for us. I mean, not only do you have, of course, everybody doing their thing and this, the essential story, but then you have little side stories that you can... The only other side do. story that we did on that same night, as I don't know if you guys were sitting there. You might not have been. But we dragged the mayor's wife down Fog Alley. I didn't see Me that and Jen. One. That's hilarious. We started it right so you right where your bench is. Yeah, yeah. We found her right there, so probably in your blind spot yeah, yeah. of Kmart. We like just went, hooked our arms like like that onto her uh -huh. and just dragged her while she was kicking and screaming. Now she now Jen told me you guys did a thing a bit with the mayor every now and then where you had like toad money and everything yes. and then it, it eventually moved on to harassing the mayor's wife yep. which was which is why we ended up dragging her down be yeah, like yeah. you're coming back with us that's hilarious that you guys i mean she would tell me that you guys would just go up to the mayor and just kind of 
play all play with him. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's hilarious because I mean, I, I mean, he would play with me too. Yeah, yeah. He would just walk up to me. And, I mean, I think AJ literally did. He just <laughs> like right into my chest. I'm just like, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, that's character. <laughs> if, I'm, if I'm out of character, we're gonna have a conversation. If I'm in character, well, I mean, it's, oh it's, no, it's I have no issues with it. Uh, like Mayor is, he's a wonderful dude. Yeah, yeah. Toad, is, a, Toad is funny. Toad, Toad is funny. funny. Oh, I love hearing him walk around. Oh, his comebacks are. His, I was, I literally caught like a few of them, especially towards the end of the run. I was like, God, this man is a genius. Yeah, mm -hmm. this guy is a savage. Mayor Toad genius. Speaking of savage, man, let's go, let's go back to freaking the Hollow, man. Those guys. <laughs> <laughs> they are savages. <laughs> they are savages. <laughs> and they go hard, and we love every minute of it. Working with a lot of these people, <laughs> let us tell us a little bit about that, man. Working with all these guys and, and these amazing, talented people, women, everybody. Man, it's hard to know where to begin with all of that because <laughs> there's a lot of great talent that comes through uh, Camp Snoopy and the Hollow. Yeah. Uh, from the hooligans, uh, the two troll twins and their uh, entourage of scarecrows that hang around them, <laughs> uh, to the witch hunters and assistants, to the witches, witches. Uh, to my entire squadron of soldiers. I mean, there's just great shadow talent that goes all the way around. All the shadow creatures, uh, the uh, shadow witch. But I'd probably have to say, going back to my very first year in the Hollow. Definitely. It's somewhere towards the mid portion of the season. I'm still kind of lost, just winging it, going about, trying little things here and there, trying to figure out what's working, what's not. Mm -hmm. And then one of the scarecrows runs up alongside of me and just goes, hey, follow me. Uh, try and keep up. Wow. <laughs> uh, she's now one of the... Um, Florence. The florist in Forsaken Lake, okay. but she was my running partner for my first two years of the Hollow, mm -hmm. and she's quick. Yeah, she, it, it was yeah. tough trying to keep up with her, but it gave me a newfound respect mm -hmm. and a newfound energy and everything. It was a lot of fun, and uh, I got to give a huge shout out to Lumi, probably one of the most talented monsters that I've had a chance to work with. Uh, Doink and Boomer, the two troll twins. Mm -hmm constantly hilarious <laughs> i can't hang around them for too long because i just start laughing <laughs> so i have to dip out especially since my character is supposed to be pissed off all the time yeah, yeah. oh let's see who else there there's uh seth what was his character in ghost town he was like what oh in ghost town seth seth was he, he, he runs with all slater yeah no one. yeah okay yeah. So, yeah. This later. so you guys are familiar he's with like slater a cowboy he's a kind yeah. of like a he didn't more really of a kind of have a character but they always used to like give him mel gruesome I, was just, like, I, yeah. well, I, I would see him as more of like a gentleman like cowboy yeah a lot of people called him the gentleman like cowboy yeah. like yeah. especially with his duster yeah yeah because he had like the long it wasn't like a duster duster but also not like then his freaking beautiful hair flip every time yeah. he slide. <laughs> the yeah. beautiful hair flip slide. Right. I mean, because he was in camp before, but he yeah, was like yeah. a... In camp, he was like a shadow gob... I don't know. A shadow uh, something. The character's names changed so much. Just Yeah, yeah. Uh, I believe then he was a tree beast of some sort or whatever. I don't know. But either way, I got a chance to run with him my second year of, uh, of the Hollow. Mm-hmm. And that's where I really got started trying to learn how to slide and everything. He took me under his wings, showed me some things on how to actually slide out on streets. Mm -hmm. I've been doing it for years out at the rink, but sliding at the rink compared to actually sliding out on streets mm -hmm. is two completely different things. Oh yeah, dude, that rink it's all waxed up and everything, and then you go to the you go to the actual streets and it's like got to do it my way, got to got to kind of ease into it, you know what I mean? Yep. Mm -hmm. Which was a lot of fun with him is I took a little bit of time to just learn and get the hang of it and get the feel for the ground definitely. because out of the four zones camp des definitely has the most slick ground our that's ground is I've butter heard. over there that's what yeah. i've heard which is also why we have a lot of incidences of guests slipping and falling yeah. wow yeah because it's how slick it gets and when all the uh pine needles come down mm -hmm. it makes it that much more slick but after i got a little bit more comfortable with sliding out there i went and tagged along with him and then he would just see a gap and go, go for it. Nice. And you'd have no chance to think you would just have to go and go do it. it. Yeah. Yeah. 
uh, which be becomes real scary, especially inside of the uh, soldier's mask. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of the soldiers, you'll notice that they'll cut the eyes out, they'll wear eye black, but if you look real closely, you can see the whites of their eyes. Mm -hmm. But you have to be looking right into their eyes to see that. Yeah, yeah. For me, I wore a mesh hood underneath my mask. Okay. So if you look me directly in the eyes, even if you're standing face to face with me, if you're trying to get in my face, you still will not see my eyes. Definitely. Yeah. And that really threw people on a huge mental trip because <laughs> I would hear all the time, oh, he's not scary, he's just a real person. Look, you can see his eyes. And they'd take a look and go, holy shit, you can't see his <laughs> eyes. <laughs> that's hilarious. That man. is really funny. I think that's great because, I mean, for them to try to think they can outsmart you and then you go up to them and just, nope nope not one bit man. you activated my trap card <laughs> <laughs> very <laughs> much so exactly. but it did make it real dangerous uh for me to where i had to be careful of picking and choosing where and how i slid yeah because i can't see any detail out there everyone walking is just a black shadow mm -hmm. If you're not walking in, if one of the monsters is not walking in a character walk, mm -hmm. I've mistaken them for guests before. If they're just kind of standing there, just scanning the area, trying to look for someone, I've mistaken them for a guest and just went right up and went to go scare them. And it's not until I'm right on top of them can I see like, oh, you're one of us. Never yeah. mind. <laughs> <laughs> I wasted the good scare on you. <laughs> I'm that slide hard, too. That's hilarious. Uh, we got a couple of fan questions on Instagram for you guys. Um... Actually, two of them are from Jacqueline Winners herself. Um, fan question number one from Jackie. This one is for Panda. Thanks for the pine cone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thanks for the pine cones that I never received. So, I would do this thing every now and again to where I'd start collecting pine cones and start giving them to as many guests as I possibly could and send them out through all of uh, Knott's Berry Farm. That's nice little secret kind of, can you deliver this, you know what I yep. mean? And they never got to me. They never got to her. I sent about 15 of them to her. I've sent about another 15 to Jackie. I got you next season. I got you, <laughs> I got you. <laughs> it just so happens to be that I saw two people wearing a uh, decayed jersey. Yeah, yeah. Walking by and went, I know they can get this to her. So mm -hmm. I gave them a pine code and I said, get this to the she-wolf. <laughs> it's a I message. remember that night because she knows we what were all mean. mad at these kids because these two girls kept being, where's the she-wolf? Where's the she-wolf? And I was like, I swear to God, if these are fangirls. Those were the two girls. Yes, I heard them. That's because of him. I didn't realize they had a pine cone. They had a pine cone. I sent them on a uh, mission. And she was, at, uh, <laughs> she was at the hanging at that time. That's hilarious. Um, and I told them that you have to get this to her. Or else? Or you said, did you say or else? And uh, they eventually came back and told me that they couldn't get it to her. So I started going off on them on how a complete waste of a breath they are and just <laughs> all kinds of things that I don't even remember what I was saying. Do we ever? And then I, I said, that. don't disappoint me again. Get it to her. And I sent them off again. Oh my God. Oh, that's why they came back. Okay. <laughs> that's why they went back. Okay. <laughs> they didn't go back to CS after that. They're like, hey, we don't want to do that again. Uh, this one's for Allie. Yes. Uh, Jacqueline asks, do you want to keep your character for next year? For Ghost Town? Yes. I want to keep it, but up to, like Upgrader. Upgrader? Yeah, and stuff like that. Definitely. I had other ideas that I would, would want to do in Ghost Town, but I kind of like fell in love with this idea mm -hmm. more and stuff like that, so... I'm just gonna upgrade her as just long as I get to stay in Ghost Town. Cause get I, to, yeah, yeah, because um, yeah, I could see um, even. I mean, you've added a ton to it mm -hmm. this season. Yeah, everything I wore was pretty much something I bought and or like and altered. Mm -hmm. Besides, like my bloomers was like from wardrobe. Okay. So I wore my own costume. That was uh, no. I mean, and I can't wait to see this character make a return. I can't wait yeah. to see what's to come next with it, you know? I mean, that goes for all characters that want to make a return. I mean, I just can't wait to always see what's next. I mean, some people always get ideas mid-haunt, and they're just like, oh, that would be good for my character. Some people involve them that same year, but then some people will just wait for the I mean, next year to... You guys came the last night, right? Yeah, we were there. You saw what me and her were wearing. We were wearing black and white socks, and we <laughs> had our hair down. 
Yeah, yeah. So that was like their beginning of us being like, do we like the way this looks? Type of thing. Like, a little yeah. test out for something. Yeah, yeah that's always good to just test yeah. it out on the final night. A little, little field research. Exactly. Exactly. Um, so, being hot is an event as it is. There's got to be ways that you guys get in character every night. You guys pump yourselves up. What is some stuff that you guys like to do to pump your guys? Let you go ahead and start. <laughs> you want me to start? You can start. Okay, so I start earlier, uh -huh. and obviously we carpool, so he's forced to come with me, and we get there at like two forty, two thirty. Two thirty would be like the earliest we ever get there. Okay. Um, but we just get there, we eat something, and then I start putting contacts in. I sometimes listen to music. Not very often because somebody's always wanting to talk to me. Mm -hmm. Not him. It's usually other people coming up like, hey, what's up? And I'm like, yeah, what's up? <laughs> As I'm like putting contacts in, I'm like, yeah. yeah. But most of the time it's just talking. And like Jen said, we don't mean we, us that were first year streets to Ghost Town, didn't really, some people didn't really get that much time to like really like fully yeah, so like the... get into character because we did do have to do like pre scare. Yeah, yeah all the time so that would be kind of like when we were like kind of getting into character with all these people coming in 30 minutes early mm -hmm. yeah. so that's what we did his is more interesting so like you said we'd get there around 2 30 2 45 every day and the way that i always like to get in character is by going over to where all of camp snoopy would hang out to get ready to meet up lay down on the floor and take a nap i love that He's all about that life he slept Love until that. like, what, 10, 15 minutes before he would have to get up for a meeting. Yep. Sometimes. That's the best way to do it. Like, we have photo proof of him sleeping. You know where I'm going with this now. <laughs> I already know you like it. But before we get there, um, best food at Cruise Nets, what is it? Best food? Because I'm saying chicken tender quesadillas. At Cruise Nets? I, I used to work eat. there. I used to work there, so I know. I don't eat. I've been liking the uh, chicken tender wrap. <laughs> chicken tender wrap. Okay. I'll go with the safest. Like I don't eat much mashed potato. If it's something that's behind, like behind there, I I eat mashed potatoes. Mashed potatoes. Mashed potatoes. <laughs> baked, mashed potatoes. <laughs> baked potato. I don't eat much from like that other side of the counter, oh, unless yeah. it's fr sometimes I'll eat the French fries, but the, I don't eat much from there. Mm -hmm. I'll eat salad. Good. Yeah. yeah, I like me some salad. They had a good salad bar there. I remember. Yeah, that. I really. really good salad and I'll have there. soup whenever they have clam chowder. I'll have clam chowder. Definitely, there. especially on a cold night. Yeah, beautiful. Man. Um, you guys familiar with our friend here sleeping at con? I mean, I watched the other podcast and I think I've caught him almost sleeping at that bench. Of course, I slept in the <laughs> hollow comfortably. He sit. He sits over by RJ. Which one? Remember, I can't at see face. anymore. We're, we're at the face painting booth. Right, right next to the hooligans. Right across from the hooligans. Right? That's where <laughs> yeah, you guys yeah. sat. Yeah. Yeah. Who's there? Okay, I'm doing an interview. Yeah, that's my dad, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, but yeah, no, he sat right across from the hooligans. That's okay. where he would sleep. I think all my night off, I probably saw them like once. It's a, uh, it's a, it's a, it's a sight, definitely. How did, uh, did they met? Did they, they not mess with him? They did uh, not. No, that's not true. Jackie woke you up. Oh, no, 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 no in oh. Ghost Town, I would try. Um, in the Hollow, you just kind of. In the Hollow, I would, I, because I, we haven't, we hadn't had gone there so many times, so I would, I would try to get a lot of footage for the Hollow. Yeah. So I was kind of like, I was everywhere. Um, so I would go like he'd be in his little area, and I'd go off to like the sides and just kind of get different angles from different sides and mm -hmm. stuff. So I can never, I never had the time, and then like people started noticing me. At that point, I should have took advantage of that, but I mean, I didn't. <laughs> But yeah, know. you know for next year. Like I said, with the uh, with the way my mask was uh, this year and the previous two years, I can't see detail. Yeah. So people sitting on the sides, I don't really see. Um, you could be sleeping, you could be sitting there, you'd probably be halfway dead for all I know, and I would not be able to tell. <laughs> you just look like a black blob to me. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I see. If you think of like a uh, silhouette, like a shadow silhouette yeah, yeah. that's literally all i can see 
Okay. And that's yeah. what everyone looked like to me. <laughs> so. Unless you were like under a light. Unless you were directly under a bright light, like the one that was right there next to the face painting booth. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, if you weren't underneath that, everything was was just a shadow. Yeah. yeah. Definitely. Um, what has been some of your favorite scares this season? Um, we had, I think, I had one with Carly that you had on. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you guys were there. There was a moment where we basically had two girls like laying on the ground, like hugging like this, Jeez. just in camera like that. Oh wow! And I was just like, and she's just yelling at him, and I was like, they're screaming. I'm like, shh. And we both started quieting them down, and then I was like, stay there. And I walked away, I was like, I'm done. And there was a moment where somebody, like, was being, it was me, actually, Judas, yeah. in Kmart, and she was also there, and someone said something rude to her, or they were trying to, like, pot, play rock, paper, scissors, or something like that with her, mm -hmm. jokingly, like, but it was, like, rudely at the same time. She goes, rock, paper, scissors, you die, and just went like this across her neck. Oh my god. Was mean, I was just like, I'm not even, like, this is not even my scare, but I love this moment. <laughs> this is a good moment. Like, I'm appreciating all this. Like, it was, I was like, mm, this yeah, girl. Um, one of my other favorite moments, which everybody talks about. They're like, oh, when Merrick and Bo had their fight. Yep. Does, ever, do you guys realize that was because of me? Really? Because on that night, that was the night I told Merrick, hey, you can Merrick me. And so he was following us all the way through Fog Alley, in front of the hotel, down Market Street. We were running from him. Because they're like, hey, you can't catch us. We're faster than you. And I was like, I want to do this where it's lit. So I go into Kmart. I didn't know Bo was there. <laughs> and so I stop in the light so that he can get me. And that's when Bo, like, shoved me out of the way and, like, just, just got, him. got him. And nobody knows this also. Um... Morty, the other vampire, the yeah. taller, the like one of the OG vampire yeah. that's there, he snuck up behind me and Jen, and then bit me in the neck. Oof. And during the time when those two were having that fight, we so they're there, we're across like this, closer to like where that fog machine is. Mm -hmm. He just came up and went into my neck, and I was like playing with it, and I was I was like kind of falling, and there's other people like they didn't know which way to look. <laughs> they're like, look at this, and they see me and her, and we're screaming, and then like we just run off, and we're all trying to make sure. Like I felt he, it's not like he just kind of faked it. Oh. He like actually, he didn't puncture my skin, but he like yeah. he actually like went down into my neck, and I was like, I guess I'm part vampire the rest of the night. <laughs> <laughs> so we got a vampire saloon girl next. Year. Saloon so girl, maybe. Killer, yeah, <laughs> maybe we'll see you. She's hung, she was already hungry for blood before. I was. <laughs> but the thirst wow. strong. Yeah. That was one of my favorite moments among, like, I guess, like, not a shenanigan, but, like, a show moment. Mm, but but scare, other scares that were just everything that we, like, we did with Jen. A lot of the stuff that me and Jen did together. I mean, we were getting noticed for our, like, tag team scares, like, so. Besides the moment when she tripped me on accident. <laughs> we both went for the same scare, and her phone went out, and I just went flying. So it looked like I slid. Yeah, yeah. And it scared everybody. Nice. It was I mean, bad and good. An accidental mistake or what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How many fans did you go through this year? That was another staple of your character. I okay, so I originally bought four. And I basically went through all four and I needed two more because that's how they get packed. Mm -hmm. So I needed I bought two more for the end of the season. And I only have basically two left. That work. The one that I finished the season with and one that I didn't use. <laughs> and then I have this one. Where is it? This one was used while like messing around. Yeah, yeah. And I only broke, I broke it here. Okay. And it was when I was using two fans at once. Oh, wow. Because I was like, let's experiment. Let's use two fans at once. And people would did not like it. <laughs> they were scared of it. Well, yeah, this is your gut for you guys. I oh, have some. Really? Yeah. yeah. I wow. have Nice. You guys can so hang out somewhere. Yeah, oh, we, got little, we got a little haunt memorabilia over there. We got like something from Hostel. We got Vote Toad. Yeah. We got a yeah. We got something from yeah. I think I'm lucky. Uh, yeah, that was I got that for actually when I used to work there. The 15. Yeah, I uh, actually I, it was. I 16? worked there in 2016. Yeah, yeah. They gave me that. Like if you did all your haunt shifts, you get that and all your tickets. And I was like. Oh. 
<laughs> so I, I think, got yeah, it. Yeah, I was like, I think I have that key because yeah. they gave us the year before. The skeleton keys. But yeah, I went through basically five bands. Awesome. I threw two of them away, and then there's the one I still have, that one, and then there's another one that I'm giving to somebody else. Can't wait to oh, nice. We're going to hang that one up. It's going to be good. I'm going to put that on the set. Yeah. And then with the difference, I, everybody probably wonders, how did I not drop my fan like Jen did? Mm -hmm. Is I attached a little feather duster thing to it so that I can run around with it like dangling from oh. my wrist Nice. so I don't drop it. Nice. Well, that's, no, that's good because even if you didn't want to hold it, it's just boom. Yeah. And then like I would make a little bracelet and then it's <laughs> Yeah, I love that. I'm what are some of your favorites here to see? Uh, so, starting off with one of the first ones that I can remember, it was uh, myself and uh, one of the hooligans, CJ, mm -hmm. one of the uh, scarecrows. Uh, we were both at the front. It was myself, Hudson, and CJ. All three of us were up there. We're just going about doing this thing. I do this thing to where I jump into a bush and just pop out of the bush and yell random stuff at people. <laughs> Don't even know what I'm saying. It was kind of my lazy scare. Yeah, yeah. When I got a little tired. But uh, we're getting ready to start heading back. I see two girls walking up. I drop for a slide. He drops for a slide. They both run into each other, fall over into the planters, nice. into the bushes. We hear them kind of crying out and just hysterically crying and whatnot. Both of us look at each other, just shrug our shoulders, and keep on Long walking way. by. <laughs> Come to find out later, my uh, cast lead pulls me off to the side and goes, Hey, that was kind of messed up. <laughs> but they're okay. <laughs> but it was funny, too. It was like, yeah, they fell into a bush. He goes, no, that wasn't the funny part. It looked, was like, what was the funny part? They both had full cups of Slurpees. <laughs> and were wearing white t-shirts. Oh! <laughs> Not anymore for the rest of the night. <laughs> got like, some red and blue shirts. Well, okay. That's hilarious, man. Well, not well. Maybe they bought some merchandise after that. There you go. <laughs> Send money to Knox right there. Boom. <laughs> I like that. No, that's hilarious because we've, we've heard a lot of stories. I haven't heard that one at all. This I haven't heard the Slurpee one. I, haven't heard so, I mean, we've heard all the beer ones. For the yeah. Beer. yeah. I mean, I've done that. Yeah, beer. Beer's, the beer beer's usually a, uh, a typical come through. If you're not hanging out to your beer, well... <laughs> Better hang on to it. <laughs> I, I, yeah, we, I mean, I think Dylan was saying that he, uh, was it Dylan or was it Riley who was saying that about the fried rice? It was Riley. Right? Oh, it was Riley. Riley was telling us like he scared someone and dropped his fried rice. Yes, yeah. I've heard that story. Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, oh my God, dude, there goes like 13 bucks down the drain right there. <laughs> uh, fresh, man. What is your guys' favorite scare tactic to use as far as going in for a good scare? Uh for me, uh, being that I'm a bigger guy, mm -hmm. uh, if you you can usually hear me walking well before you even see me, mm -hmm. and it all has to do with the boots that I'm wearing and the uh, toe caps, because I would never have time. I'd procrastinate making all my uh, sliding gear, <laughs> so I would never have time to actually cut the lips off of the bottom to properly fit it to my boot, uh, because I'm one of the few people that will actually slide with boots on. Yeah, yeah. I'm actually wearing the same type of boots that I would be using out there. Nice. Um, so you would almost hear like a horse clopping towards you. <laughs> it was this ridiculous sound. I hate it. It's just because I would get too lazy to procrastinate and just get slammed with work at both jobs. So yeah, yeah. never have time to get around to it. This year I'm planning on changing that. But a lot of times it's getting their attention. Mm -hmm. And then them looking at me going, I see you, you can't scare me. And just going from a slow paced walk and all of a sudden, in a blink of an eye, I'm now right in front of you. Right in front of you, man. And it freaks a lot of them out because they think that a big guy like me can't possibly move that fast. Mm -hmm. Now, I can't do that for extended periods of times, but short bursts, yeah, yeah. just to get your attention, it it's a lot of fun to do. Definitely. Favorite Um, I like the I would say my fan, but the fan's just like my easy thing just to get mm -hmm. a whole area to be like what to go. I actually, it's probably one of my favorite things to do because it gets everybody on edge looking for where it's at mm -hmm. and it lets other monsters go in for even more intimate like scares that will probably get them on the ground and stuff like that. Yeah. So that's probably one of my favorite. I mean, it's made people drop beers and stuff like that, of course. Um, other than that, I just like being 
stalk, like stalk, stalking. Mm -hmm. Being creepy, I found how creepy I could be now. Just stalking up behind people. Definitely. And not even having to use my fan and just, them not realizing I'm there. Just boom. Boom, I'm there. The element of surprise is always a fun one. Yeah. That's awesome. I like and my that. voice, but I mean, every, everybody has like, but my favorite would be kind of distraction and like being creepy. Mm -hmm. So. That's always a fun one. Yeah. Wouldn't you? Um, I'll go my go first one. Uh, wouldn't you guys know you guys wanted to become um, not monsters? You can start with that one. So for me, it actually started quite a few years well before I was even able to apply to haunt. Mm -hmm. um, back in middle school, me and some of my friends, we all went to Not Scary Farm, fell in love with it, saw the sliders out there, and thought to myself, one day that's something I want to do. So went out to uh, Home Depot and bought some hard shell carpenters knee pads. Horrible idea. Never <laughs> do that. Uh, but yeah, and just started going around on the streets uh, during Halloween and started sliding out there. Sliding. sliding. <laughs> We'd get a couple of good slides in here and there, but nothing to what I'm able to do now. Mm -hmm. yeah. And completely tore my shins up. Oh, man. Oh, gosh. So, I never recommend using carpenters knee pads. <laughs> it was a horrible mistake uh, at 14 years old. You just you just figured, like, hey, knee pads, slide, let's do it. Yeah, yeah. and from there, uh, it's just been constantly sneaking up on my family and scaring them, teaching myself how to walk silently everywhere I go. I just scared my boss earlier today. Nice. Not even trying to, it's just... I've ingrained that walk into myself so much since I was 14 it's just part of you now. that I just tend to walk like that so I can walk up and downstairs pretty quietly and just next thing you know I'm right behind people. That's hilarious. Yeah. I love that. That's the best. Um, for me, actually, I never ever thought about working scary farm or doing anything scary until 2011. Oh, wow. So I was already in college. I was in college and uh, my friend that I met there was like, hey, let's do like a little scary maze at our, for our college. And then let's do that. We did that. And he also worked at Knox at that time. And so the following year, he's like, let's audition for Scary Farm. Mm -hmm. And so me, him, and somebody else, we all did. He made streets that year. I went to, I decided just to like, I don't know what I'm doing. And it, you know, you have to audition for streets. And I was like, I, I, don't, know, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just a film student. I I rather be like behind the, <laughs> behind scenes, the yeah. scenes right now. Like that's what I'm studying is to be behind the scenes. But it's still growing up. I loved like I never did theater, but like I always just loved doing like plays for my family when I was young and stuff mm -hmm. like that. And that's always been like ingrained in our family. So I went. To, that's why I went to mazes. Mm -hmm. I was like, I'm gonna give myself two three years in a maze. So. The year that Infected showed up was the year I wanted to audition camp. Yeah. And that was the year it was gone. So I had to, you know, I was like, all right, time to wait it out and stuff like that until yeah. it came back. So. It looked like you had a good, solid career in mazes, though, too. I mean, I, I, yeah. I, that's really cool. I mean, that always is always a good It program. really helped me coming out onto, like, Ghost Town. Definitely. I was extremely nervous because, like, it's Ghost Town. Mm-hmm. Like the you know what started like street zones and yeah, stuff yeah. like that. So it's like me scare zone right there. Yeah, yeah and I was just like, uh, <laughs> this is like the second biggest like footprint area for the zones, I believe. Yeah. Uh, it is the biggest. It is. Is bigger than Carnival. Uh yes. Uh especially since Carnival has been shrunk. Oh, it's true. And since the biggest, I'm like, this is a lot of room coming from mazes and the only big next biggest thing was being in pumpkin eaters front area yeah i mean i had all gunslingers like they're like here you have the freedom i hear this character but i don't mind you running around the whole maze okay but still like that's a very limited area so yeah, yeah, yeah. i was very nervous but i mean <sighs> now this is a question that i i we haven't asked does it help on your first year on a, on a scare zone like that does it help going with the running partner to ease the stress a little bit or to ease the kind of so me i don't me and jen didn't start like for sure partnering like running partner yeah. until the moment when our other 
girl became the mayor's wife. Because mm -hmm. it was originally just going to be the two of them. And I was just like, all right, I'm going to run with you tonight. Like, I was just like, who do I find somebody to, like, groove with? And I was, like, grooving with people. Yeah, yeah. But our breaks didn't, like, coexist. Co co like, our rookie over a year, um, our marm. Mm -hmm. Alicia. Oh, Alicia? Yeah, Love like, it. we ran together for, like, oh, almost a whole night or part of a night. And it was just, like, it was really nice. Yeah. yeah. But our breaks didn't go together so it was just like we can never meet up and stuff like that so i knew jen and i had the same breaks and when that happened we're just like all right i'm sticking with you because i guess she kind of just goes bad shit was happening and i'm like i will protect the shit out of you mm -hmm. if i need to so i was like you stay near me if we feel like something if people are being jerks i'm like huh? you're get behind me type of thing and like yeah, yeah. let's keep going so oh. But running with running partner is like probably the best thing. And sometimes people say running with like a bigger dude, like a male is probably better with a male and a female. Yeah. Because that dude is your bigger presence mm -hmm. sometimes. So we were running with a trio, but he wanted to go do other things. And we're like, sure, go for it. Well, the two of us will, you know, kill it together type yeah. of thing. So, but I usually, yeah, it's nice having somebody to have your back because mm -hmm. if something happens and you're by yourself it's you versus the guest yeah yeah, yeah. and then, yeah that's one person that has your back like as far as when it comes down to either confrontation with it mm -hmm. final statements of it you know yeah when it's time to report it like they're there to have your back which yeah is really cool um on a lighter note <laughs> yes yes yeah. um, um what do you guys draw your inspiration from for your characters so a lot of uh, the inspiration for my character was, it's almost a 17th century variation of my squad leader character back when I was an infected. Yeah. Being that I'm playing a soldier, I try and use the same two style, or the same style that I use from infected, mm -hmm. and then just change it up a bit to be more period fitting. So, funny enough with my name in infected being Operator Panda, kind yeah. of a silly soft name but i was one of the hardest uh hardest ones out there to where i'm constantly in your face constantly yelling at you yeah, yeah. constantly just trying to break you down and so i try to take that whole type of thing and then bring it back over to uh the soldier character definitely and slowly been working on that and tweaking it uh being the general this year brought a lot of new challenges to the table that I wasn't used to from the previous two years just as a soldier. Mm -hmm. Trying to really bring people into a story is something I've never been all that great at. Uh, I've never been really an actor or doing or did any type of stage play or was even in drama or theater in high school. I played football or I just kind of hung back and played Magic the Gathering with the the nerd magic. kids, there you go. which was probably better. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good old magic. That's fun. That's cool, though, man. I like that. So for me, with my character, I just kind of like, I didn't have, like, I was didn't know what I was going to be uh -huh. until I got it. And so I was like, man, I don't know. I know what I can do because I've been a saloon girl in the past. So I'm going to throw what I learned from doing that into this character but also I'm gonna be because I was always like I don't know like I was soft and just kind of like we're more playful because we're very human in gunslingers so I was just like I'm gonna bring that playfulness but I'm gonna want to be you know kind of gross how like Jen was mm -hmm. but also very stern I want to be the madam I'm the quote unquote owner of the saloon like mm -hmm. I want to be that mother figure so I'm gonna be more stern with like my character's name Minerva people are like really Minerva I'm like it's an oxymoron sort of like yeah if you think about it Minerva is also Athena the goddess yeah, yeah. they're the same person yeah and, but I'm a saloon girl type go. of yeah, thing yeah. so it's that whole thing of like I might have this name but I'm also but I'm this actually yeah, yeah. I'm very disgusting I'm an awful person the opposite could be the opposite like I think I got in I got a lot of inspiration from uh Helena Bonham Carter when she did, oh my goodness, what is that movie with Johnny Depp? The cowboy movie, oh my gosh. Johnny Depp's cowboy movie. 
he was like an Indian. Oh, uh, the lost, the Lone Ranger. Lone Ranger. There we go. And she yeah. was like, she was literally kind of like what I am supposed to be. The show. She was in charge of a kind of like a brothel saloon type of yeah. thing. I drew a lot of inspiration from like her appearance and stuff like that because I, I love her characters and stuff like that. So mm. I drew a lot of inspiration from her and how she does stuff. Yeah, yeah. I was like, I really like this, and that's why I kind of went with like a like frilly lace like bodice co corset dress thing and everything I was like I really like the way this looks and then I just went for the feather because I was like this is like the staple like you know giant ostrich feather oh yeah and stuff like that um and then that's pretty much it but like what I was wearing some of us if you went through origins yes yes, yes. the saloon girls on there originally did not have the feather plume mm -hmm. I was told by them they they're like yeah we didn't have that we weren't told we were supposed to have that until like the first night of haunt mm -hmm. they were or no not even first they said like a couple days after they were given these because the thing is they have the same face as me yeah yeah so in a way they're like part of my brothel uh -huh. so they give them a similar hair piece as me <laughs> to match me i feel i feel like i don't know for sure yeah. but like it was just like randomly given and like they didn't like it was so large <laughs> and over the top compared to mine i was like I'm sorry, I might have done, made you like, have to have that. Because <laughs> they're like part of the brothel and stuff like that. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's a great move on Nazis creative part of the Yeah, just kind of keep it together. Keep yeah. It um, yeah. Well, that connects back to the, the lore of the maze. It's yeah. out on the street, let's yeah. all make it connect. Yeah, so. just because like we all had some type of feather. Jen had her little set of feathers mm -hmm. and stuff like that. So it was interesting, but like, yeah, inspiration and just took it really from there and just kind of like. I didn't want to be like the past like character that was similar to mine, which is her name's the character's name is Goldie, who's also a part of Knox during the day. She's actually like in the saloon shows. Yeah. So I was like, somebody else played this character. That is somebody else's character. Mm -hmm. I might have the same spot slot as it, but that is that person's character. I do not want to try to be that person's character when that's what they created yeah yeah definitely. so i created something that would be my own but still vibe with hers if i needed to yeah and be like i'm somewhat related to her but i'm not her i'm like you're your, you're your I, own i'm my own self as minerva yeah yeah so. definitely um what would you guys give advice wise to people who want to join the knots team as characters or just be characters in general definitely I know everyone wants to get out onto the streets, yeah, yeah. But, but take your time in the mazes. Mm -hmm. Really get a feel for it and get comfortable. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people, I feel, rush out onto the streets a little too quickly, way before they're even ready. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then they'll have a bad experience and then sometimes talk down on either the zone or one particular person or the whole event uh, as mm -hmm. in general, as a whole. Mm -hmm. uh, but it literally just could have been you could have had one bad season. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And the other thing, too, that I always like to bring up is you'll hear a lot of people, especially since you guys said you worked around knots before, uh, you would hear other monsters, especially maze monsters, say, oh, this may sucks, uh, that may sucks, whatever. Mm -hmm. But the thing to always remember, too, is that the maze is just scenery. It's yeah, yeah. pretty lights and paint. And what's pretty the, lights and pink. That's like that. That's pretty much all it is. What really brings the maze to life the is you, the, the scare actor, the talent in the maze. So, as it may sometimes sound kind of like it's a backhanded insult, it's not meant to be. But uh, if the maze sucks, it's because the talent isn't stepping up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's literally you bring that maze to life. Yeah. Yeah. Cause you can walk through it, and it's honestly just the scenery. Yeah, you just look through it, and you just look. But when you put people in it, they, they're the ones that bring that scenery to life. Yeah. Like for instance, this year with our two new mazes, Waxworks and Origins. Yeah, yeah. When we built it, I thought there's no way that Waxworks is even going to be able to stand up against Origins. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then Waxworks' talent came in. Yeah. And blew it out of the water. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Did. And I was impressed. Mm -hmm. Origins had everything. They had the scenery, they had the lighting, they had tons of cool special effects in there. They had the whole 
uh, story, plot line, everything. It had everything going for it. Mm -hmm. And then the talent for Waxworks came in and stole the show. Dang, mm -hmm. yeah. So, and it's not that Origins did a bad job. No. no. They still did a phenomenal job. Yeah. It was just, mm -hmm. these guys decided, you know what, we're going to crank it up to 11 and just go balls out every single night. Definitely. Yeah. Which is something that I love to see because what it takes to be out on streets is turning it up to 11 every single night and trying to sustain that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's not easy, but if people can keep that mentality up and just go, if you have one bad experience, let it roll off of you. Definitely. Because if you have one bad experience in a maze, I guarantee you that same one time that you had that, you'll have seven others out on streets mm -hmm. in the same amount of time. Yeah, definitely. So, agree more. just have thick skin. Guests are going to be guests. Let it roll off of you. Yeah. Enjoy your time. If you s try and scare them and they're just like, yeah, whatever, and they keep walking, let them go <laughs> by. Just go on to the next one. You got more, you got a whole park of people there's coming. More, you got people 15, 15 to 30,000 people coming through, yeah, so yeah, yeah. there's a lot more people to scare. Yeah, yeah, I don't really have anything to add to that. That's like perfectly wrapped, huh? <laughs> Panda does a great job at that, huh? Panda, yeah. man. Panda's on point tonight, man. <laughs> I was like, he's saying everything I would say. Uh, one of the last questions we always like to let, ask our guests on the show, too, is um, what's your favorite horror movie? You want me to go? Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know if you guys seen it, but it's like called Train of to Busan. It's a mm -hmm. Korean like. I heard it's on Netflix. We haven't yeah. watched it. Someone told it, us to watch it. We haven't watched it though. It's a horror. It's a Korean horror thriller. Those it's, it's, it's a zombie. Get down with those too, man. And they're actually there was talks of it, in to like turn it into like Americanized. an American Americanized version. Yeah. But there is a second one in Korea coming out too. Okay. So I plan on watching it. Definitely oh, check it out. Okay. So this might get you to laugh a bit, but I'm a huge fan of B-rated horror movies, and it's one a lot of people don't know of, but Birdemic. Birdemic is that the? So no, I, I've heard of it. I think I don't. I haven't seen it, but I've heard about it. It is probably one of the most god awfully made movies I have ever seen in my life. Ever seen? That's that's okay. I've seen a lot of B-rated horror movies, but I've never had one to where I had to stop it halfway through the movie and just go walk away for a few hours and then come back to it and try and finish it. <laughs> this is how bad it was. And that's probably why it's my favorite, because none others have been able to actually make me turn the movie off. Damn. Have you ever seen Rubber? Yes, I have. He's on my game. But no reason. <laughs> and that, you know, it's funny you bring it up, because a lot of the greatest B-horror movies that started out as B movies are now the most iconic ones. Mm -hmm. Evil Dead. Yep. That was a B rated horror movie. Yeah. Killer Clowns from Outer Space. B rated horror movie. Now that's my favorite horror movie of all time. Uh, let's see what else. Halloween. That yeah. was actually supposed to be a B movie because it was a really low budget movie and now Michael Myers is like a staple serial killer yeah. franchise. Um what was it? Um Jigsaw? Jigsaw. That one. Saw. Saw. Yeah. Yes. I couldn't think of the movie. <laughs> I just always wanted to punt him off the tricycle. I I've hate that just, thing. I've, I've always just loved his voice. But I, I, love that actor. I hate that movie so much. But I do have to give it to the original, though. It was just a student film. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. It was just a student film. They yeah. had practically no the budget. Movie. That's why the whole movie takes place in a single room. Huh. Definitely. Interesting. Uh, it's... Actually, I think the first, the first, the guy who wrote that one is actually the guy who wrote and actually is in, I believe, Insidious. Okay. I think the Tucker and Specs, yeah. the guy who the glasses. Oh, okay. He's the one that directed, and I think may have wrote it. That's crazy. Um, I, would, yeah. I wouldn't. I didn't know it was a student film. So it just did really yeah. well. Yeah, I mean, the first one would have been fine for me, but would they come out with six other iterations well, of it? Yeah, and, and but also. Cool. Like, since the first one got so big, I think isn't that the reason why... Isn't that the same, like, movie company that did Twilight? Or something, I think. Some in entertainment, I think. I don't know. Right. I know, like, because of Saw, another set of movies was like, being was able to be made. Huh. I oh, hope it's Twilight. I hope... I don't think it is. Okay, good. I don't think it is, though. Um, no, Saw is just... It's gory. 
It's, <laughs> yeah. It's beautiful sometimes, but at sometimes you're just like, yeah. a lot of creative. Too. I, I like those films, and it's and it's just due to the fact that I think what always sells me over for those films is the guy who is Jigsaw. Yeah. He's such a great actor. I mean, not only was he, I mean, Jig, I mean, he's most notably known for Jigsaw, but I loved him when he played. Uh, I'm a huge fan of like DC comics and stuff. So like the show Flash, he played a, a villain called. He voiced the villain uh, Zoom, which had he would wear this black suit and he would just you know do it. So yeah, I, I just I'm a huge fan of that. And um, yeah, man, I just I don't know. There's so many horror movies I can talk about all day. <laughs> I'm a horror. I love horror. I do. Frankenstein. I mean that's that's the man right there. Frankenstein's yeah. monster actually. Um, with that being said. Allie, Panda, we really appreciate uh, you guys wanting to be on the show. I mm -hmm. mean, because I think it's awesome that we're getting people actually who want to come on and share their stories. It, it, it really blows us away when we receive messages that people want to come on the show and, and talk with us, yeah. uh, even give us the time of day. That's awesome. And we <laughs> really, we think it's, we think it's really cool. Um, we can't thank you guys enough for what you guys do. Um, now that Panda is here, I mean, we can always see. We can also thank finally someone behind the scenes too. Yes, as well. thank you. Um, because, like we say every time, without everyone behind the scenes and the people who actually put the show on, um, this this wouldn't be nothing. It's in the end of the day, it's a big team effort, and um, it puts on the greatest show in the world. Um, and we can't thank you guys enough. In the end of the day, we don't look at you guys as characters. We look at you guys as heroes because you guys bring our nightmares to life. You guys. <laughs> just put on this great show that we, us horror fanatics, love to go and visit every night. So with that being said, we just want to thank you guys so much. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Thank you for having us. Yeah, oh, thank yeah, you for having us too. And, uh, thanks for the gift, obviously, too. That's so yeah. cool. The fan. Yeah. I, can was, uh, I can cool myself off now. <laughs> <laughs> that was one of our favorite scares this season, and for you to give us one of those, that's yeah. simply it's an honor. So thank you so much. Mm -hmm. um, ladies and gentlemen, that is going to do it for another episode of Scare Actor Appreciation Month. Um, we uh, are having so much fun doing this, and it's slowly coming to an end. Yeah, sadly. Getting a little sad. And then we're going to have another post-haunt post, post -haunt depression. Post-post. Post -post. Yep. Um, so be sure to follow us on social media. We have Twitter, at Knights of Horror, and Instagram, at The Knights of Horror. Uh, we have Patreon, so if you're feeling a little extra generous, anywhere from a dollar to twenty dollars, we have different tiers, different options that you can join and different uh, prizes and cool stuff you can get from those tiers. But if you guys can't, always the most for us is just a like, comment, and subscribe on all of our videos um, because we can't appreciate you guys enough for not only supporting Character Appreciation Month, but just supporting the channel and uh, everything that we do. So with that being said, I'm Anthony. It's your boy Sam. We got Allie. We got Panda. And this is another episode of Character Appreciation Month. Peace. Done. Like.